Hey guys, it's Michael from Cock Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to determine which IMF or intermolecular force a substance has. Let's start with the definition of IMF. Intermolecular force is defined as the attraction between molecules. For example, I have two water molecules right here. The attraction between one water molecule and another water molecule is called the intermolecular force. That's in contrast with the the bonds between the O and the H. These right here, these are bonds, they're covalent bonds. These are called intramolecular forces or just bonds. So intermolecular forces are attraction between molecules and that's different from the attraction within the molecules or the bonds. The three main intermolecular forces that you'll need to know in most chemistry classes are London dispersion force, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bond. So how do you determine which of these forces a compound will have? Well, you can just use the skyline. If a compound is nonpolar, then it will have London dispersion forces only. If a compound is polar, it will have London dispersion and dipole-dipole. And then lastly, if you have a compound with an H that's directly attached to an F, an H directly attached to an O, or H directly attached to an N, then we'll have all three. We'll have London dispersion, dipole-dipole, and hydrogen bonding. So everything, all compounds have London dispersion. If it's polar, it'll also have dipole-dipole. And then if it has HF, HO, or HN, they don't have dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding. So let's take a look at some example problems and apply these rules. In this problem, we have to determine what IMFs are present in the following substances. The first substance is carbon dioxide. To do this, we first have to determine if the compound is polar or nonpolar. And to do that, you have to draw the Lewis structure. So to, I'm just going to draw the Lewis structure to save time. But if you're having trouble drawing Lewis structure, check out the video in my description below where I go over that in detail. The Lewis structure for carbon dioxide looks like this. C with double bond and then each of the O's have two lone pairs. Then we have to check whether this compound is polar or nonpolar. And to that, we, we can just use a quick checklist. Uh, I have a video where I go over this in detail, but for sake of saving time, I'm going to type out this checklist right here. So a compound will be nonpolar if the central atom, the middle atom, has no lone pairs and all the atoms surrounding the central atom are the same. You can see carbon meets criteria number one because carbon doesn't have any, any lone pairs on it, and it also meets car criteria number two because both the surrounding atoms are oxygen. So that means that carbon dioxide will be nonpolar, and since it's nonpolar, it means that it only has London dispersion forces. So we'll start once again with the Lewis structure, and the Lewis structure SF4 looks as such. Then we need to determine whether this molecule is polar or nonpolar. So we use the checklist. We see if the center atom has any lone pairs. And S does have a lone pair on the center atom. So since it doesn't meet this first criteria, then I mean, this compound is going to be polar. And since it's polar, it will have lone dispersion forces and dipole-dipole. It doesn't have hydrogen bonding because we don't see any HF, HO, or HN in this, in this compound. Okay, next, next example, CH3, NH2. Just right off the bat, we see that there's an N and an H right next to each other. So that means this compound meets, it has an N and an H, which means it's going to have lens dispersion, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding. So if you see HF, HO, or HN in the molecule, then you know it's going to have all three. Next example, C5H12. Here's a, here's a neat trick. So any compound containing carbon and hydrogen only is going to be nonpolar. So since C5H12 only has carbon and hydrogen, it's going to be nonpolar, which means it will have lone dispersion forces only. Other examples of this be like C, C4H10, C20H40. So any compound that just has carbon and hydrogen will be nonpolar, meaning it will only have lone dispersion forces. Next example, neon. This is a single atom, a single element. So if it's a single element, then it has to be nonpolar. And since it's nonpolar, it will only have London dispersion forces only for, for neon. And then lastly, HCl. Now we draw out the Lewis structure for HCl. It looks like this. And we know that Cl is more electronegative than H, uh, which means that you're going to have a dipole moment pointing in this direction. And so that makes it polar. And if it's polar, it will have London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole, but it doesn't have hydrogen bonding because we don't see HF, HO, or HN. And that's how you can determine what type of intermolecular force a substance has. The first step is just to draw the Lewis structure, then determine if it's polar or nonpolar. So once again, I went over that pretty quickly to save time, but I have videos that teach you how to draw Lewis structures and determine if it's polar or nonpolar in detail. And 
if a compound has HF, HO, or HN, then that means that's hydrogen bonding, dipole dipole, and lund dispersion force. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Acing Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.